Welcome back to Franchise Wars Reaction, Recap, and Review of Young Justice. This week, the episode Private Security, which is a ball, let me tell you. It's just so fun. You should really watch it. You won't stop laughing, except for when you're crying. It's one of those episodes. Now, uh, while watching this, you may notice that there's a slight difference between my hair here and my hair in the video. Uh, I recorded these two different days, that's why. So, we start off finding out what happened to everybody who joined the team in Markovia. Halo is hanging out with the Harpers at Artemis' house. Uh, the Doctor is hanging out with Black Lightning. There's actually some suggestion they may be getting along, you know, well there. And uh, Superboy and Miss Martian are taking care of Prince Brion. And noticing some similarities with, between one of them. It's okay. It kind of reminds me of you back in the day. <laughs> we get one other scene showing Superboy trying to help Brion control his anger through the technique of fixing the bike, bro. Which is actually kind of cool. Kind of makes me hope they give Connor a leather jacket at some point during this series. It'd be awesome. And hey, it's in the new comic. We then cut away to Dick, who's trying to postpone dealing with any of these issues with the new three recruits they have, but is also trying to team up with Will Harper, you know, Red Arrow, to get something done along with Guardian, you know, the other Harper, and with the original Harper, Roy, who's now, you know, Arsenal. And, uh, Will agrees, provided there's a little deal made. Only if you guys help me out with something first. I'm game. Whatever, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Arrow Guard Security. They're always on point. Which, yes, is exactly as cheesy as you're hoping it would be. Now, we're going to take a slight detour from that, you know, ball of laughs, and trust me, it's going to keep going for quite some time, to cut away to Zatanna. Uh, you see, apparently, Artemis and Halo are escorting Zatanna to her one hour a year meeting with her dad when Naboo, the master of the Dr. Fate helmets, lets him get out. And yeah, it's, to be honest, a little bit rough. The year before that, and the year before that. Be grateful Naboo grants you this boon at all. Zatara's gotten old. Anyway, enough about that deeply tragic story. On to the fun stuff again. Arrow Guard Security, I just, I just love the cheesiness of that name, is apparently, on point, taking care of some new VR goggles, created by somebody called Good. Now, I'm betting money that's actually short for goodness, as in granny goodness. <laughs> but, hey, you know, we'll talk about that later. Because Roy's pretty certain that, hey, they're superheroes. There's nothing to worry about. There's no one who would do something so stupid as to, you know... Seriously, why are we even here? No one's taking this stuff in broad daylight. this stuff in broad daylight. Yes, it is one of those episodes. Now, to be honest, Brick's plan is actually surprisingly intelligent. Uh, they apparently uh, like hacked onto the company's computer servers to make themselves the designated drivers for the trucks that are picking up the VR goggles. Unfortunately for them, Will has a clipboard, and you never doubt the clipboard. So soon there's a chase scene, which quickly shows that of this group, uh, we definitely know who the Riggs is. It's Arsenal. So no one's taking this stuff in broad daylight, huh? Okay, I stand corrected. <laughs> this chase scene is going to be full of so many little fun jokes and personality quirks that it kind of feels like they're trying to see if uh, Crispin Freeman can do his own impression of D. Bradley Baker in terms of doing the same voice for the same characters, but, you know, like, they're clones. Like, it really does feel like they're trying to see if they can actually 
challenge him for that, which is kind of cool. And then we cut back to Zatanna saying goodbye to her dad. It's sad. Now, there is one scene I had to remove to make sure I kept the episode clips under five minutes. And that's that while they're watching Naboo, you know, release Zatara so he can talk to Satana, Artemis goes ahead and asks Halo if she remembers anything about her previous life. And Halo does have some flashbacks. Uh, they start off what we do know about her, that she was in the royal palace and she did help Baron Bedlam actually kill the royal family. But... We also see some new facts, ones that imply that she was apparently a war orphan who was, like, struggling to survive on the streets or whatever before she got transformed or kidnapped the first time. It's really ambiguous. And Halo seems to want to not think about those memories, which is always interesting for an amnesiac character. Anyways, back to the fun stuff. Oh. <laughs> you already had Roy and Jim. You didn't need me. Not for a mission, anyway. I needed someone who knows the city. You needed someone who knows you. <laughs> Seriously, hey, we're in the middle of a thing here. <laughs> So yeah, Brick's trying to give as good as he gets from these two, but he's actually totally outmatched. I mean, he's fighting Nightwing and Red Arrow. That's too much for any not big name bad guy. And at the same time, they're of course discussing their issues, namely that Dick seems to be running away from actually helping his new recruits. With, you know, Will, Red Arrow, eventually telling him that he should go ahead and just form a new team. Oh, and they prove that office supplies are also deadly weapons. <laughs> the clipboard is mightier than the sword. seems pretty clear we're doing this little kind of Harper get-together just as a fun little episode to make sure that Dick moves from being the loner character he was trying to become at the end of season two back into being the leader character that we know him to be. And also for shots like this. Seriously, who are you guys? <laughs> Hunter security, always on point. <laughs> <laughs> I actually want a spinoff now. You were right. Of course I am. I'm older and wiser. You're a clone. You're, you're the youngest guy here. Hey, I'm older than Jim, but I'm prettier. I'll step up. I'm gonna make it right with Halo, Brion, and Jace. Never doubted it for a moment. All goggles present and accounted for, boss. The clipboard never lies. You know what? Private security is more exciting than I thought. Sounds like the beginnings of a Harper family business. Don't push it. Baby steps? <laughs> now, I believe there's one more thing on our to-do list. Yeah, sorry, I messed up their private security name at the start of the video. It's Bow Hunters, not Arrow Guard. I guess I just confused Red Arrow and Guardians, like, you know, team-up nickname for these guys. Still, 
You think this is time for, like, you know, a fun superhero adventure? Well, apparently, the private mooks who are running some, like, human trafficking lab for metahumans are just totally outmatched. So we get this scene instead. Okay, this is a pretty sweet episode. I think we looked better in our bow hunter security uniforms. No, you do not. <laughs> So this really was one of those breather episodes. You know, one of those things you put between some heavy hitting arcs early on so that you can kind of get some characterization movements going on, give the audience something light to enjoy, give them a reason to reinvest in characters who've been going through a pretty dark patch for a while so that when you do break their hearts later, it hurts even more. Now, two things I want to note about this episode. The first is the fact that this does seem to be kind of Greg Wiseman almost bragging about how good of a job he did handling Roy Harper as a character. I mean, he not only brought in Jim Harper, who is traditionally Roy's, you know, cousin or uncle or whatever as Guardian, he also did manage to actually do the one-armed Arsenal character with far better skills than they did in the comics. And this one kind of feels like him showing off his toys. The second part is the VR goggles. This is the second episode we've had them mentioned, and both times they've highlighted the name Good. And yes, I'm figuring this is some granny goodness stuff. We've already got Godfrey doing his thing. We know that he's, you know, Darkseid's propaganda minister. We've seen Darkseid at the end of season two. We know the apocalypse is involved with the bad guys now because of the whole father box thing. And honestly, mind-controlling VR goggles sounds exactly like the kind of thing that granny goodness would do. Here's just hoping they don't have, like, Ed Asner voicing the character. Or they do have Ed Asner voicing the character. Because, you know, honestly, it's creepy, but good creepy. So, if you enjoyed this, uh, feel, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, and thanks for watching. See you later.